Okay, hi everybody. Let's take a look at the rubric for the uh, video presentation Panopto uh, project. So this is going to be due week 13 because it's going to take me uh, a few weeks to watch them and to review them, give you feedback, and to grade them. So um, when you click on Panopto, there is there will be an assignment folder uh, built into our course, and that's where you will be recording it. You'll put the name of the presentation, put your name in the uh, subject as well, and uh, when you do the setup for the actual Panopto recording, it will be in the assignment folder affiliated with the course, and under session you can put the name of your presentation with your name. Um, on the left hand side it will then give you a video option and an audio option. The video option should be turned on because we want to see you do your um, uh, presentation. So we want the video on and we want it to capture audio. And if you use uh, a microphone or a headset, it's probably best rather than just speaking into the camera. Oftentimes there's a lot of uh, background noise that comes through or echoing of your voice. Um, on the Below that it will say slides and you'll want to check off record PowerPoint so it knows to import the PowerPoint into that presentation. Now, if you're not going to be writing on the PowerPoint or using the pointer or the cursor, then you don't need a secondary source such as the built-in display. So if you check off the built-in display, it kind of does a screen capture. So if you're pointing on the screen or writing on it, um, that will show. But if you're not, you don't need a secondary source. Just check off the video as the primary source and then check off PowerPoint so it knows to import the PowerPoint into your presentation. Okay. Um, in terms of the rubric for that, um, this is the breakdown of how you can earn 100 percentage points. So you will receive uh, 10 points for discussing the disease of choice with some of the statistics, right? For example, if you're talking about um, osteoimmunity and osteoporosis, then we'll talk about what percentage of the population has the uh, osteoporosis. Well, for another 10 points, you'll talk about the causes of it. What is the explanation of the physiological and the metabolic causes of the disease? And it has to be pretty thorough to, to earn those points. Who's affected? Again, does it affect women? Does it affect men? Um, does it affect both? Does it affect women in a particular age bracket? So you want to discuss who are the primary people affected by your uh, disease of choice. You'll have to show the anatomy of the organ or the system or systems involved. That will uh, earn you 10 points. And then discuss the signs and symptoms. Remember, signs and symptoms are not the same thing. Symptoms is what the patient can explain to you that they are experiencing. And the signs are more of an objective assessment, something that you can um, quantify. So if someone was experiencing um, pain, perhaps an algometer could be used to measure the amount of pain and severity of the pain just as an example. How is it diagnosed? Now here there are traditional labs uh, and testing as well as, fun as functional labs and testing and they're not the same thing. right? Traditional labs are uh, certain labs 
and blood chemistry that can be done um, at Quest Diagnostics or LabCorp, uh, Bioreference, right? Though uh, red blood cell count, white blood cell count, glucose, hemoglobin A1C, those are more uh, traditional labs. Uh, tests, uh, x-rays, MRIs, CAT scans. Functional testing is a little bit more advanced. Um, if you want to look into some functional testing, you can explore um, a lab like Genova Labs. They do more progressive functional testing that may not be or look like traditional labs. It is through uh, blood. Um, sometimes it uses stool as well, stool sampling, to look at a lot of enzymes and cofactors and things of that nature. Treatment options. Uh, from a traditional medicine mindset, what are certain medications that could be used or medical procedures that are done to help this condition? But there is a large movement towards integrative health care in which there is a functional medicine model approach, which doesn't necessarily involve just medicine, but can discuss nutrition or can discuss certain foods that could be utilized to support systems and healing. Or there are also certain foods that can aggravate it. Right, and certain things within the internal and external environment that can aggravate it. Um, so what nutraceuticals, vitamins, supplements, minerals, amino acids um, can support the systems involved and how? How does it help? Right, Not just saying, uh, for this I would give vitamin D and calcium for this osteoporosis. Well, how? how? What is the physiology? How do those things work? A real strong understanding an explanation as to how they work. Um, identify the substances, whether it's diet and or lifestyle, that needs to be modified. Perhaps there is something triggering the disease and we need to eliminate them. We need to eliminate whatever is triggering it. Or perhaps there is something that they're not including in their diet or lifestyle that should. Are they getting enough sleep? Are they not? Are they getting proper variety of colors and foods of phytonutrients? Or maybe they're not. Are they exercising? Are they on the computer too much and blue light affecting them? So there's a lot of different things that can be discussed through diet and lifestyle that perhaps need to be modified in one way or the other. Do they need to include it or eliminate it? And also for another 10 points, uh, a summary uh, to summarize the uh, presentation, as well as citing and using your references. All right, so you want to have a nice closure, a good summary of it, but you also want to cite uh, where you got all of your information from so that you're not claiming it is your own. So this presentation should be done in a manner of which you are, let's say, um, you've been, you're working in a healthcare facility, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a PA, whether you're a doctor, and you're given the assignment to actually do a presentation on this disease, and you are the expert on it. So you should choose a topic that you're genuinely interested in, that perhaps may affect someone that you know very closely, maybe it affects you, a family member or friend, your mom, your dad, uh, any relative um, or anyone, or something that you may be interested, a topic that you may be interested in moving in, uh, in a specific area of interest, an area of specialty that you may want to explore. Okay, so these topics need to be uh, chosen in advance. Um, there are no two students that will be doing the same presentation. So everyone will be choosing a different topic. Okay, and you will uh, have to get them approved. And as they're approved, you'll see we'll create a list. Um, I'll create an announcement. And on that announcement, you'll be able to post your choice and it will be approved there or not approved. 
it can't be a topic that you've done in our program already. I mean, something, of course, that you may have heard about, but nothing that you've already done any presentation on or written a paper on, because it'll flag through turn it in, and you don't want to self plagiarize. Okay, um, it's a great opportunity to learn. It teaches public speaking, um, even though you won't necessarily be speaking in the public because it'll be you and your uh, your camera. Um, your classmates will be viewing it. Okay, it will be in our Panopto system. You will change the share settings to make available to anyone with the link. So when you go to, it's not under the editor, but there is an option that will say share. And it gives you share with anyone, share with um, only certain people. We want you to change it to share with anyone that has the link and then make sure the final step is to sh save those settings. Okay. Um, students really do great on this. Um, I don't necessarily want you reading every slide. That's kind of boring. Uh, I want you to have a strong understanding of it and to highlight certain things that are there, of course, but to discuss it. Um, I don't want you to just read every sentence on the slide. You're not going to capture your audience. Um, certain things you can read, but then go into a little bit of a discussion with it, okay? Um, if you're reading everything verbatim, line for line, there will be some deductions that come from that. All right, everyone.